Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. I will introduce an advanced topic in this video and uh, the upcoming two videos on the subject of uh, energy practice in the internal style of martial arts. Very often, the word energy has a different meanings in martial art and Xiu Dao, which have been covered in many of my previous videos. However, in today's video, the word energy specifically means the energy experience in martial art practice. In other words, how to practice energy usually gained by practicing Qigong but through martial art practice. The internal style of martial arts make it possible to integrate the intangible energy experience with martial movement practice. That's why I said at the beginning of this video that this topic is very advanced and it will help many internal style practitioners reach a higher level in terms of understanding and mastering this practice. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's topic is Wei Miao Xuan Tong, a key concept from the 15th chapter of Dao De Jing. Following the previous chapter, Lao Zi continued to introduce the behavior of a person who achieved the Dao or De Dao. So, Lao Zi started his chapter by saying, quote, Gu zhi shan wei shi zhe, wei miao xuan tong, shen bu ke shi. End quote. Translation In ancient times, the wise men of the Dao were subtle, exquisite, divine, fathomed, and too profound to be known. <coughs> End translation. So, the key term Wei Miao Xuan Tong, O Sato, Executed, Divine, and Fathomed, was used by Lao Zi to describe the one who achieved the Great Tao. Then, Lao Zi continued to describe sages who had achieved the Tao, known as De Dao in Chinese, by using seven sentences representing seven traces of behaviors. Quote, <coughs> Yu Xi Ru Ru Shu Dong Chuan, Yu Xi Ru Wei Si Lin, Yan Xi Qi Ru Ke, Huan Xi Ru Bing Zhi Jiang Shi, Dun Xi Qi Ru Fu, Huang Xi Qi Ru Gu, Hun Xi Qi Ru Zhuo. End quote. Translation How cautious they are, like men in winter crossing a river. How reluctant like a man fearing in the four quarters their neighbors. How reserved they behave like guests. How elusive they resemble ice when melting. How simple they resemble rough wood. How empty they resemble the valley. How obscure they resemble troubled waters. End translation. Very interesting imagery of a person indeed. Even though some of these criteria and behaviors may seem outdated, the nature of these behaviors has still remained unchanged as a way to evaluate a gentleman in modern China, a sign of the influence of Taoism on Chinese society. Later in the chapter, Lao Zi provided his suggestions to deal with Dong and Jing or dynamic and static by saying, quote, 熟能浊以静之徐清, 熟能安以动之徐生, end quote. Translation, waiting quietly while the mud settles, remaining still until the moment for action. End translation. In other words, let each thing act according to its own nature, and it will eventually come to rest in its own way. 
It is just another way to express his philosophical concept of Wu Wei or non action. This is the great chapter of the Tao Te Ching. This chapter tells us that humans and the Tao should unify as one. Tao is invisible but becomes visible through the one. So, in Xiu Dao practice, the objective of the practice is to become the one that unifies the Tao and oneself to the one, which is the integration of the Tao and the humans, the immortal. In other words, the immortal is just the one that achieves the greater Tao. By the way, Taoism and Confucianism share the same understanding regarding the attitude to achieve the Tao, a term used in Taoism but De or virtue in Confucianism. So, what is the right attitude in the practice of Xiu Dao according to Tao Te Ching? It is expressed by the four words that Lao Zi used in this chapter. The Wei Miao Xuan Tong, or subtle, exquisite, divine, and fashioned. We can see that by following Lao Tzu's principle expressed by these four words, Xiu Dao practice is a process of self improvement, which is still relevant in modern times. Furthermore, these four words, subtle, exquisite, divine and fathomed, are also used to describe the Greater Tao when we perceive the Greater Tao, which is also used in Xiu Dao practice when comprehending its imagery. To summarize, Lao Tzu in this chapter introduced some very important concepts introducing Dao, De Dao or achieve the Greater Tao. Seven behaviors, the way to deal with dynamics and the statics, and so on. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Qi Gan, Stage 1. Yi Xing Yan Qi. Topic covered in today's video include first, Qi Gan review, second, a three stage energy practice approach, third, how to practice. Yi Xing Yan Qi. Fourth, misperception. Fifth, demonstration. And sixth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Qi Gan Review. Before going any further, I recommend you first check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 11 Energy Sensation or Qi Gan. Posted on this channel about two years ago, in which I have introduced Qi Gan. Link is in the description. So, what is Qi Gan? Qi Gan, per the introduction in the prior video, means energy feeling or energy sensation during martial art practice. This term was created and popularized in the 1980s since. Qi Gong practice was extremely popular in China. Since there were so many people practicing Qi Gong back then, and many practitioners experienced certain sensations of energy during their practice, the term Qi Gan was created to describe such an experience. Later on, this term was adopted to also describe the similar energy feeling as in Qigong practice, but through martial art practice. However, in the old days, since there was no specific term to describe those different types of energy sensations in martial art practice, people simply used the term Qi or energy to describe the energy experience. So, Qi as a noun was also used to describe an experience or feeling, a dynamic concept better expressed 
by a verb. Since the Chinese language is generally very flexible in terms of expanding a word's meaning, it gives people considerable leeway to extend the use of an old term by adding new meanings. This is unfortunately also the reason for many unnecessary linguistic confusions, making proper translation and interpretation very hard for not only non-Chinese people, but also many native Chinese speakers. That's why I always emphasize the importance of the linguistic context in the interpretation of a term. Failing with misinterpretations will definitely occur. I will never run out of examples of this unfortunate phenomenon. So, in the interest of time, I will talk about this further in the future in a dedicated video. In the 11th video of this series, I briefly introduced some basic topics about qi gan or energy sensation. In the same video, I also gave some advice on handling this practice. Due to the objective of that video and the time constraints, it was impossible to elaborate on a specific practice. So, it's time for me to elaborate on this topic further in today's video. Based on decades of practice, I created a three-stage energy movement practice. I plan to introduce each of the three stages in dedicated videos. So, in total, it will take three videos including this one, to fully introduce these three stages. In each video, I will also introduce how to practice each stage in the context of each of the three internal styles of martial arts. So, what is the three-stage energy movement all about? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. A three-stage energy practice approach. We all know that when talking about the internal style for martial arts, the word energy is the most commonly used term. Basically, there are many layers of meaning to this simple term in a martial art context. For example, energy can be explained as a type of martial power such as eight different types of Tai Chi energies, Peng Lui Ji An, Tai Lian Zhou Kao. Energy also means the internal sensation followed by some martial movements. Due to the level of martial art practice, many people understand and focus on the first type of explanation of the term energy. So far, there exists no detailed explanation of this important aspect in the internal style even though it is a very common term used in Qigong practice. This topic has also not been widely mentioned in classic martial art training documents in history, which have rather been limited to simpler terms such as Qi without any detailed explanation. So, my objective is to introduce a method that includes three stages of a practice to deal with energy sensation and related martial movements in order to provide a reference and guidance for practitioners of both internal and external styles. It is a very advanced topic and takes a lot of time and practice to fully understand it. Even though the concept is simple, the practice is not that easy to master. So, you may need to watch some part of this video multiple times in addition to physically practicing it in order to master it. The three stages are Yi Xing Yan Qi Use the body to attract the Qi Yi Qi Dai Xing Use the Qi to lead the body Lian Shen He Qi Train the mind and integrate the qi. 
In today's video, I will focus on the fourth stage and introduce the rest in the following two weeks. Also, pay attention to these three verbs: yan o attract, draw; dai o lead, guide; he o integrate, unify. Since they are the key terms in dealing with the relationship between body, energy, and the mind. The three-stage energy movement approach is the three-step method, with each step focused on different aspects, collectively forming a comprehensive solution to improve energy movement practice. A practitioner should start from the first step and gradually move on to the next one. So, do not skip any step in practice. Also, it is very important to have practiced a martial art already before applying this method. This is the practice for those who are working toward an advanced level. Well, it is not meant for beginners. It will not hurt beginners to know about it in advance, and when your practice is ready, you can begin practicing this method. Our community lacks this kind of systematic approach to teaching, but I believe with time, the overall understanding and the practice of internal arts will definitely improve. This is one of the primary motivations for me to work on introducing these practices. So, what is Yi Xing Yan Qi? The fourth stage of the three-stage practice all about. That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. How to practice Yi Xing Yan Qi? Before we look at how to practice the first stage, Yi Xing Yan Qi, let us first break down the term itself. Yi means with, Xing means body. Movement or form. Yan means attract, draw. Qi means energy, energy sensation. Put together, Yi Xing Yan Qi means to use the movement to attract the energy sensation. In other words, a practitioner focuses on the practice of a movement and the energy sensation will occur with the movement. So, the priority here is the movement itself, not the energy sensation. Energy sensation will only occur when the movement is done in a natural state. <clears throat> natural being the operative word here. Natural does not mean soft. Actually, to make the energy sensation work for the purpose of a martial art practice, the body and its movement should be relaxed, totally different from being soft. It's only when you can experience the energy sensation where the body maintains an overall strengthened state, would your practice be correct. Energy sensation can occur while the body is soft but would not be considered the right energy sensation in martial art practice. This is the key factor in evaluating your energy sensation practice in martial art practice compared to Qigong. It is a very important point and I hope you will remember it. Now, that you are aware of the standard for the fourth stage. Let me introduce how to work on it in Xing Yi, Tai Chi, and Ba Gua practice. I will use one movement from each style as an example to elaborate the practice of Yi Xing Yan Qi or use the movement to attract the energy sensation. Xing Yi. Let's take Pi Quan or Metal Fist as an example. So, each time, when moving your palm from in front of your chest to close to your stomach 
while changing the hand from a palm to a fist. The hand moves slowly or as fast as you can still have an under sensation, but the movement of the sensation is slower than the movement of the hand. In other words, the under sensation moves slower than the physical hand. It seems that the movement of the physical hand draws the movement of the sensation. It is very abstract since it is a very advanced practice, which normally takes many years of practice. I'd like to share it with the public today since I believe it will help the internal style of a martial artist of future generations. However, if you do not feel it, then just keep working on it. I'm sure most of you will eventually experience this energy sensation. Tai Chi. Let's take the Tai Chi beginning movement as an example. When your hand moves upward from the side of your legs, you will only focus on your hands and the arms. Also, make sure the movement is slow enough to feel the energy sensation following the hand and the arm movements. In other words, the physical movement leads the energy sensation. This is the key point of that practice. So, the physical movement should not be very fast but should not be stagnated either. You need to use dynamic movement to draw the energy sensation. Bagua. Let's take the Qinglong Tanzhua or Black Dragon Extend Clouds movement as example. In many of my Bagua videos, I have mentioned many times that Bagua's eight posture circle walking is not a practice in which one just keeps the arm and the hand posture static and walks along a circle. Actually, there are many subtle movements besides the stepping exercises. Those subtle exercises are excellent for practicing and experiencing energy sensation. Therefore, when practicing the Qinglong Tanzhua movement, hands, arms, and the body should have a small opening and closing motion, which should be used to create energy sensation. A key point here is that at this stage, one should only focus on the physical motion but let the energy sensation happen naturally. And uh, more importantly, physical movement should lead to an energy sensation. That was a brief introduction on how to practice Yi Xing Yan Qi in each of the three internal styles. Well, I only introduce is using one basic movement of each style. You can apply the same principle to other movements. Also, it is very important to know that the mind or mental focus play a key role in this practice. The mind serves as the bridge between a physical movement and an energy sensation. The energy sensation led by a physical movement will just not occur without the appropriate level of mental focus. The mental focus should be just the right level, neither too strong which will cause energy stagnation, nor too casual which will be unable to bridge the physical movement and the energy sensation. You need to sense the balanced state of mental concentration by yourself through practice. So, is such an advanced topic misperceived in the community? Of course, that brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Misperception As an advanced topic, there's not enough discussion about Yi Xing Yan Qi in the community. Regardless, 
misperceptions abound. For example, some people who have already experienced a strong energy sensation in Qigong practice experience no sensation in martial art practice and claim energy sensation in martial art practice to be either useless or impossible. Let me debunk it today. First of all, impossibility and uselessness are two different topics here, and if it is impossible to an individual, but it does not mean it is useless to practice. Impossibility and uselessness are just insufficient to deny the existence of the phenomenon. Conclusions must always be logical, or else they are not conclusions. Also, it is definitely possible to have an energy sensation when practicing martial art movement. It just requires the right method and dedication to practice. As described in the previous section, as long as you follow the right practice, you will achieve it. Also, being able to sense the energy flow in martial art practice indicates the level of your practice. Speaking from experience, the energy sensation can be an indicator of the sensitivity of your meridian system, which can be used to evaluate your practice. By the way, I have shared more about my personal experience of energy sensation practice in the prior video where I introduced Qi Gan. I once again recommend you watch it. So, if you are unable to sense the energy in your martial art practice, it does not mean you should deny its existence or its usefulness. Now, let me show you a quick demonstration of Yi Xing Yan Qi practice in the demonstration section. Topic 5 Demonstration. Today, I'd like to demonstrate the Qi Gan practice with Xing Yi Pi Quan or the Metal Fist movement. Okay. Topic 6 Takeaways First, Qi Gan Review Qi Gan means energy feelings or energy sensation during martial art practice. Check out my prior video introducing Qi Gan, link is in the description. Second, a three stage energy practice approach. The three stages in Qi Gan practice are Yi Xing Yan Qi, use the body to attract the Qi. Second, Yi Qi Dai Xing, Use the qi to lead the body, and yi lian shen he qi, train the mind and integrate the qi. Three, how to practice yi xing yan qi? Focus on the practice of a movement, and energy sensation will occur with the movement. The priority here is the movement itself, not the energy sensation. And the sensation will only occur when the movement is done in a natural state. This can be practiced in each and every movement of each of the three internal cells. Fourth, misperception. Some people who have already experienced a strong energy sensation in Qigong practice experienced no sensation in martial art practice and claim 
and the sensation in martial art practice to be either useless or impossible. This is a misperception. Inability to sense the energy in martial art practice does not disqualify its existence or its usefulness. It only implies one's practice has yet to reach a sufficient enough level. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to have a visual idea of Yi Xing Yan Qi practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.